Right, good afternoon everyone. I'm Anne-Marie Blake. I'm a partner at Christelle's LLP in London. And as Bart said, I'm going to talk to you today about the different regulatory approaches to AI that are being taken in the UK and the EU. So, first let's talk about what AI is. And artificial intelligence is a concept that's been around for a long time. It was first coined in 1955 by the American professor John McCarthy. And his definition was simply the science and engineering of making intelligent machines. But AI has various definitions. So for example, the UK's ICO defines it as a broad category of algorithm-based technologies solving complex tasks by carrying out functions that previously required human thinking. And IBM's definition of AI says that artificial intelligence leverages computers and machines that mimic the problem-solving and decision-making capabilities of the human mind. In the AI Act, the AI is defined as a machine-based system that's designed to operate with various levels of autonomy and that can be explicit or implicit objectives, generate outputs such as predictions, recommendations, or decisions that influence physical or virtual environments. And as Bart said, over the years, AI has experienced various cycles of hype. And we're probably all aware of the current level of interest and excitement in AI, which to a large degree has come from OpenAI's ChatGPT, which within two months of its launch in November last year, had 100 million active users. And that explosion in AI and the hype around it has led to an increasing degree of scrutiny around the world and governments looking at what approach should be taken to the regulation of AI. And we're seeing both differences in approach, but also commonalities as well in the approaches. So before we look at how the UK and the EU are proposing to regulate AI, I think it's important to understand how AI is expected to transform the world. So on the one hand, we've probably all heard the fears about killer robots and what they may do to the world. But other ways in which experts have predicted our world's going to change by 2030 are mind-blowing. So experts foresee AI generating entire films, acting as personalized tutors for our children, revolutionizing economies, even addressing the energy crisis. AI might achieve human-like intelligence, predict and help deal with medical problems, and help the elderly stay connected. However, on a more ominous note, experts such as the American computer scientist Eliza Yukowski predict humanity's demise due to AI by 2030. encourage
transparency and accountability requirements. And what governments are looking to do is to foster innovation while ensuring that we have responsible AI development and use. And the right combination of those approaches really depends on the specific jurisdiction and the AI system. And at the current time, governments and countries are in different stages of evolving their response on how best to regulate AI. So as Bart said at the outset, what I'm going to focus on is the contrast between the approaches in the UK and the EU, and also look very briefly at the US to compare and contrast how those jurisdictions are approaching the regulation of AI. And in the EU, the thinking's really all about empowering people with a new generation of technologies, and their approach is about the people, whereas in the UK, the thinking is about driving growth and unlocking innovation. So let's look first at how the U EU approaches regulation. And they're looking to put in place what's probably the most ambitious framework in the world in terms of AI regulation. And they're very much aiming to be a global leader in AI regulation in much the same way they have been with data privacy regulation. And we're probably all familiar with how the GDPR changed the data protection landscape and how the global approach to data protection has changed. I think the AI Act is ambitious in a very similar way to the GDPR. So in terms of the basics, it's important to understand that the draft AI Act is an EU-wide regulation and it has extraterritorial ter effect. What the Act does, it looks at the risk of AI systems and it tries to deal with those risks in a practical way by categorizing AI systems into four different levels of risk. And if it's passed, it's going to require companies to assess AI risk before those systems are put on the market. Now, if you have a look at the next slide, you'll see the current position with the AI Act. As you can see, it's not yet law. It's been in the making for over two years. And I understand there's a good chance that it will be published, uh, will be passed before the end of the year. So in terms of the next steps, the EU Commission, the Council of the EU, and the European Parliament all need to agree on the final version. And there was an announcement made last week that they're making good progress on that. Um, it's expected to be agreed by the end of the year, likely to come into force early next year but not expected to be effective until mid-2025. So let's look at the risk framework that's created by the Act. The first category of risk is AI systems that pose an unacceptable risk, uh, unacceptable risk. And their systems, such as those that create social scoring systems that can be used to discriminate against certain groups of people, systems that create deep fakes to spread propaganda or misinformation, and unauthorized AI systems that could take over power grids or cities' transportation systems, for example. And these sorts of systems are going to be prohibited under the Act. The next category of systems is high-risk AI systems, and that's really what the Act's about. So high-risk AI systems include systems that are used to assess credit worthiness, to make hiring decisions, to provide facial recognition or other biometric ID. And the vast majority of the onerous obligations in the Act are imposed on these sorts of systems. They're going to be subject to a number of regulatory compli compliance requirements including the need to get a permit from a government regulator, and they're going to have to be trained on high quality data. The third ca risk category under the Act is those systems that pose a limited risk. And they include systems that are used to generate personalized news feeds or product recommendations that control our smart home devices or play games. 
And these sorts of systems aren't going to be subject to any specific requirements, but they've still got to comply with the general principles of responsible AI ethics. Finally, the fourth category is minimal or no risk systems. So they're the sorts of systems that block phishing emails, that generate weather forecasts, that predict whether a customer is going to click on an ad. And they're not going to be subject to any specific requirements. Now, the Act distinguishes between providers and deployers of AI systems. So, a provider is the developer of the system, and a deployer is the party who uses the system under the authority of the provider. And the Act puts the primary responsibility onto the provider. And if we look at that through a data protection lens, then the provider is probably the processor under the GDPR and the deployer, the controller. But unlike the GDPR, where the more onerous obligations are on the controller, under the Act, the more onerous obligations are going to be on the provider. And companies that place systems, AI systems, on the market or in service in the EU, regardless of whether they themselves are based in the EU, are going to be caught by this Act. So it's important for companies based outside the EU to understand they may come within the ambit of it. And particularly given the sorts of fines and sanctions that can be imposed under the Act, they need to make sure when this comes into effect that they're compliant. The Act's talking about fines of 40 million euros or 7% of global turnover, whatever's the higher. And as well, enforcement authorities are going to have very significant powers. It's probably unsurprising that a wide range of businesses have expressed concern about the Act. So in June this year, in an open letter, business leaders urged the EU to take a more hands-off approach on the basis that they're worried the Act will make the EU less competitive in the global market and may end up with AI innovators moving out of the EU. So we're going to look next at the approach to regulation in the UK. And in the UK, the approach is totally different to the EU. So in the UK, we're not proposing to create any umbrella legislation. Instead, the approach here, which was set out in a white paper back in March this year, sets out the ambition of the UK being the best place in the world to build, test, and use AI technology. And broadly speaking, that ambition rests on two main elements. So first, existing UK regulators, such as the ICO and the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, are going to be asked to implement the principles. And secondly, there's going to be a new set of central functions for them to support that work. So you can see on the slide the five key principles that those regulators are going to be tasked with. They're going to be non-statutory initially, at least, and they're intended to guide AI use and development in the UK. Regulators are going to be expected to publish guidance for businesses based on those principles. The UK government's outlined the steps it expects regulators to take, and in the next six to 12 months, that consists of assessing and applying principles to AI use cases that fall within their remit, and then in the next six to 12 months, issuing new guidance or updating existing guidance to businesses. And regulators that are tasked with supporting businesses operating within the remit of multiple regulators are also being required to collaborate to ensure that they're not going to issue conflicting guidance to businesses. And to date, we've already had some guidance published, particularly by the ICO. They've published guidance on AI and data protection, and also separately explaining decisions made with AI. In terms of the next steps, the UK is hosting the world's first major safety summit on AI, which is taking place next month on the 1st and 2nd of November. And there's going to be prominent um, figures in AI, governments around the world, and academics gathering together with a focus on how to control the risks 
at the frontier of AI development. So given the global power struggle that's going on with AI, it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of that summit and how it might shape the UK's next steps. Now, as promised earlier, I'm going to turn very briefly to the position in the US. And the approach there is very different to what's been taken in the UK and the EU. So far in the US, they haven't adopted a comprehensive approach to regulating AI at either federal or state level. And at state level, they're regulating AI primarily through specific provisions in the privacy laws, such as the California Privacy Rights Act, or by creating specific obligations for companies that use AI in certain contexts, such as employment. At federal level, interim period, there's been a voluntary agreement announced where seven prominent AI companies have agreed to minimum guardrails for safety and security. So, in summary, regulation of AI is complex and there's different approaches being taken globally to how best to do it. Whether there's going to be a true global standard for AI regulation remains to be seen. However, what I'd suggest is that businesses don't simply wait until there's a clear regulatory framework in place in their jurisdiction as there's steps they could be taking now. In terms of those next steps, and could involve ensuring that boards have oversight of AI risks, so making sure that AI is put on board agendas, working out who in the business is responsible for AI governance and establishing an AI committee. Companies should also be putting in place policies that govern the development and use of AI within their business and making sure that those policies do align with any regulation that's in place in their jurisdiction that's relevant to their business. And fourth, in much the same way as businesses keep data protection registers in the EU and the UK, they should be ensuring that they've got a register of AI systems so they know how AI is being used in their organization. And finally, of course, they should keep an eye on the legislative and regulatory developments in their jurisdiction, particularly in the EU, of course, the AI Act, and in the UK, the guidance that's going to be issued from regulators in the next six to 12 months. Thank you.